So I want to build on the simple chart a little bit. Um, I want to maybe do a comparison. Uh, so I've got two uh, series of datas uh, plotted up here. Uh, so I can see if region one outsold region two, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, so let's look at how we can plot two of them. I'm also going to create a new worksheet uh, and get this chart off of the away from the data and put it on its own separate worksheet. So let's let's do those couple of things. Uh, so for starters, I'm going to make a new module and I'm going to call this uh, comparison chart. And I'm really going to start with everything that I've done in the simple chart. So I'm just going to copy it all and paste it into the comparison chart. And I'll have to clean up some stuff. Uh, and this will turn the sub name, change it to something more meaningful. Okay, that looks good. So when I'm looking at this, if I'm going to compare two regions, I'm going to need to collect which two regions we want to compare. So I'll need uh, region number one, and I'll need a region number two. And then I'll need to populate them both. So I've declared region one and region two. I'm populating region one and region two. And then I'm testing if region one is greater than zero and region one is less than seven and region two is greater than zero and region two is less than seven. Then we'll do these things. Uh, I'm going to uh, make a worksheet. So I've collected this information. It's valid. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a comparison worksheet. Um, and before I can create the comparison worksheet, I need to see if it's there, and if it's there, I need to delete it. Well, uh, I'm doing some really rudimentary error handling here. I'm just basically saying, if there's an error, keep going. And then I'm turning off the alerts so that the user isn't prompted to delete a worksheet, and then I'm deleting the worksheet. So if the worksheet is there, it will delete without any prompts from the user. If the worksheet is not there, that would normally cause an error, but on error resume next just says keep going. So it goes down to here, turns the alerts back on, and then on error go to zero. This is essentially setting the error handling back to the way it should be, back to the default. So I have created a worksheet. I'm sorry, I've deleted a worksheet. And now I'm going to create it. So I've deleted it if it was there, and now I'm recreating it. And then I'm setting the, the worksheet that has the data on it. I'm activating it again. All right, so now I'm back to my data. Um, the regions are valid. I've deleted one if it was there, and then I've recreated it. If it's not there, I've handled that error. Um, and then I'm back on the where the data is at. So now I need to uh, have multiple. I'll have a single chart object. I'll have a single chart, 
but I'll have multiple series and series collections. So a single container, a single visual representation, the collection of data and the individual piece of data from the first region, the collection of data and the individual piece of data from the second region we're charting. I'll need to change the name of the chart object and I'll need to change the chart title text. I have series one, and now I'll need series to do series two as well. And inside of series one here, I need to change this to region number one. And then I'll need to plot the second series of data and the individual part uh, data points. And notice if I'm going to plot two series of data, they have to have a common axis. The X axis will be the month for my series two, and the X axis will be the months for my series one. Since they have that in common, then the Y values will be different across series one and series two. In this one, series one, it'll offset by the value of region number one, and in this one, it'll offset by the value in region number two. Uh, let's see what happens when we run this. I want to compare one and two. It created the chart, but it left the or it created the worksheet, but it left the chart going uh, over here. But you can see it's basically doing what it's supposed to. Uh, so here's series or region one, or the first one I entered is in blue, the next one I entered is in red, has legend, is this over here, so it lets us know which is which. So it looks good, it's just going in the wrong place. And I believe my problem is up here. I'm putting it on the sales goals worksheet, the, where the data's at. So let me put that on the comparison worksheet. Now let's see what happens. And the last thing I want to do after all the data, uh, after everything's been created, is I want to activate the comparison worksheet so that their chart is there and ready for us to view. All right, so now let's see what happens. I want to compare one, two, three. Looks good, it's just putting it in the wrong location. So let's go with B2. This could be A1, just as easily be A1. And let's go with um, 700 and 500 for our width and height. Looks better. So here I'm doing two series of data. Now, if I wanted to also see how these compared to their sales goals, notice I have sales goals over here in the H comma column, I would just add a third series of data. So it would look something like this. So to add those sales goals in, they're just a third series of data that I need to deal with. Um, so things are getting more complicated. I'm starting to put comments in here so I can keep track, uh, SC3 and SCR3. Here's the first region, SCR1, for comparison. Here's the second region for comparison, SCR2. And then SCR3 would be the sales goals. The sales goals are predictable. They're in H. So I 
The name will be the H1 value, right there, sales goals. Uh, the X values, this has to be, there has to be a common um, axis between the three series of data, months and the X, months on the X, and months on the X. And then for this third series, it's going to be the sales goals. Those are predictable. They're in the H. So it's going to be H1 offset 1, 0, and H1 index L down, essentially selecting this data. And then I'm changing this to an Excel line uh, chart so that we can uh, get a little different representation to see when the bar chart peaks over the line. One more thing I want to stick in here for these series um, for the the second choice or the second region the user selected, I want to do trend lines dot add uh, just to stick the trend line in there. And I'll do it for series one as well. So hopefully we'll see the series one plotted with a trend line. We'll see the series two plotted with a trend line. And then we'll see the series three, the sales goals, will be a line uh, graph across the, the chart so we can tell when they're above their region or they're above their goals. Okay, let's try this. The first region is one. The next region I want to plot is four. Holy cow, lots going on here. Region one, because it was selected, it was the first one I selected. Region four, because it was the second one I selected. And notice I've got the legend over here. Here are the sales goals. Here is the trend line for region one and the trend line for region four. And I don't really see a difference between those two. I mean, one's going up and one's going down, but I mean the difference in the color. So I'm going to just go back and remove trend lines. I'm actually going to put trend lines on the goals. Um, and I'd have to play with trend lines a little more. Maybe I could color them or something to tell the difference between the two, but uh, I'll put trend lines on the sales goals, and then hopefully we'll see. Uh, an increment there. What did I use? One and four. There we go. And I can see that the sales goals are trending up. Pretty flat though. So you can use trend lines in there if you wanted to uh, as a way to just another visual tool that you've got uh, in your chart. And there you go. So this is looking at kind of a comparison where we're using multiple series of data if we're using multiple series of data, we just have to make sure that we have an axis in common across all of the series. We also have to be careful if we're using this minimum scale, maximum scale, that it's true or 200,000. We don't have anything reaching over 200,000 and 60,000 was our minimum. We don't have anything under 60,000 or it would skew the results. And if we take that off, we'll see the full height. Um, this emphasizes the differences. Uh, and if we didn't have them, um, it would emphasize, let me just knock those out. It would emphasize how similar the data is. One, four. So there, you know, things, there's less emphasis on the difference. So it all depends on what you need to do for your, your visual representation.